Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the final tutorial for our gingerbread man. So we previously have modeled him, UV mapped him, textured him, animated him, rigged him, oh, rigged, then animated, then lit, then rendered, and now we are ready to actually make a movie, which is very, very exciting. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software include Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painters. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and complete this Gingerbread Man animation. All right, I have already rendered everything out. Now I am going to be perfectly honest and say that it was taking too long to render. So I had to reduce the quality of the animation. So you'll notice that uh, it is a little grainy and it's a little noisy and it's also a little and it's also smaller. So I did change my render settings to HD 540 um, and I also reduced my uh, quality because I had to get this thing rendered fast. However, if you guys are creating this for your portfolio, I do encourage you to make sure that the quality is high, that you get a nice large video so that it looks good on your portfolio. This is not going to go on my portfolio. This is a demonstration for you guys to know how it's to start and how to create an animation from the very beginning all the way to the very end. But if you are putting this in your portfolio, please make sure to render high, high quality. All right. That being said, let's take a look at what we have. So you can see that if I double click and I click next, 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 next on my keyboard, you can see that the camera is gradually moving forward. Uh, I also have my other shots, which is great. Let's go ahead and bring it into Premiere. I am using Premiere Pro 2023 and I'm going to create a new project. Bing. And in the new Premiere, it actually starts off with this, which comes with some footage that I've never seen before. <laughs> I personally am not a fan of this, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have its benefits. So up here at the top, we're going to call this our gingerbread animation, and then we have to find a location for it. So I'm going to click on this, choose a location. I'm going to copy this, control C, control V, press enter, go back to gingerbread cookie. And there is a section called movies, which is a perfect place to put it. And I'm going to select that folder. Now um, you can do a bunch of other stuff, but down here, all the way at the bottom, right, you're going to see create and I'm going to click on create. So that's going to jump me into Premiere. Let's go ahead and bring in our animation. Let's go to file import and I'm going to go to my images. Oops, I'm going to go into my images. Here's the first one. Click on the first frame and you want to make sure image sequence is active and then click on open. And then if I click and drag, it will actually show the animation. Yeah, there it is. Wee, it works. Let's go ahead and bring the rest in file import. Uh, we're going to choose scene two. Again, select the first one, click on image sequence and open. Then let's go ahead and bring in some other ones. So here's number three. Um, it looks like it didn't render 91 all the way. So I'm going to select number 92. Let me just import everything, file import. And let's bring in our last one, which is scene four as the little guy runs away. Wee. <laughs> okay, let's bring in the files, click and drag number two. Let's uh, grab this uh, little guy right here, which will basically make the scene larger. And then we're going to grab number three and then we're going to drag number four. Bink. Now you guys don't have to make staircases. You guys can bring them down totally up to you how you want to handle that. And now if I hit play, you can see the effect. So there's a lot of noise there, unfortunately. Um, there's my little ginger man looking and then he gets up. And we, there he goes. Now you're gonna notice that my little ginger man bends over. And one of the things I notice is that the little button isn't attached to the body. And uh, this one's kind of warping and that's a painted weights issue. So to fix that, I would go back into my rig and basically make sure that the painted weights were correct so that it would actually stay on the body. So those are the type of things that happen when you render is that sometimes you notice these little things and therefore you have to go back and fix them. So that's something to consider when you guys are creating your animation as well. But here we are, we hit play. Another thing to consider is that right now this is being read at 29.97 frames per second. And this animation was built at 24 frames per second. That's how we animated it. And that's how animations usually run. So we actually have to convert these to 24 frames per second. Right click on it, go to modify, interpret foot footage. Whoop. And you'll see that right now it is at 29. So I'm actually going to tell it to assume that it is <laughs> not one frame, 24 frames per second, and then click OK. 
Another thing you'll notice is that they're all like this, plus including our footage here. So I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna go to right click on it, go to sequence settings. And up here, it says the time base is 29.97. Uh, Let's go ahead and change that to 24 frames per second and then click on okay. And we're gonna get a much more accurate time. So let me go ahead and just get rid of these really fast and just convert all of them. So right click, modify, interpret footage at 24 frames per second. Okay, do it. And I'm gonna rinse and repeat these. So again, modify, interpret footage, 24. Right click, modify, interpret footage, 24. All right, let's grab these, drag them in. Ta-da. Oh, they're all backwards. <laughs> Let me fix that really fast. Oh, and you'll notice that sometimes they don't end all the way, so just make sure that these are actually pushed all the way out, like the little lines. Um, let's see, one, shot two, shot three, and shot four. All right, so I'm gonna do a little after a little effect. Um, I want to do a dissolve, so let's go ahead and do a dissolve. And I'm gonna move this to the top, cross this off here. There it is. And then I'm gonna make sure this is at the top and this is at the bottom. So when it cross dissolves, it'll dissolve onto this footage. Something fancy like that. Ooh, if you want it to be shorter, you can always drag this a little bit so this can stretch a little longer. There we go. And then comes the movie. Whoop. Whee. So next what I'm gonna do is actually move this to the right and create a little bit of a splash page because after all, I spent all this time, I might as well do a nice job. And I'm gonna bring in a frame. Scene one, shot one, just kind of bring it in here. You can just drag it in here also and then bring it in. So that's how you can bring a still. And what I'm gonna do is actually blur it. So I'm gonna type in blur and we have uh, we have a couple of blurs. So I'm gonna use a Gaussian blur. I'm gonna go to the effects here and you'll see it right here. So I'm gonna blur it and let's see, are the edges good? Yes, the edges are good. So make sure that repeat edges are on. And here I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna grab a text tool and just type in uh, ginger, bread, simple gingerbread. Cause that's the trend right now is to just make it really simple text. So let's go into, let's see, where is my text right here? I can open it up. If you're not happy with the font, you're more than welcome to change it. We can make it fancy schmancy or you can make it more modern. Uh, let's see, what would I like? I have my personal favorites. So uh, we can do Niagara if you want to. There's a range. You can do handwriting, which I don't think it makes sense in this case, but you can spend all day literally trying to figure out what the best perfect font is. I'm trying to make it a little bit like fun and friendly. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the size. And now I have something called gingerbread. Now, of course, you're more than welcome to change the color, which I might color pick from back here. Let's see, maybe a little bit. Let's see if I can color pick the gingerbread color a little bit. And of course, make it a little brighter. And make sure it reads. Let's see what other cool things we have here. We also have, is that too, too, is it too hard to read? <laughs> uh, italicize it if you want to. All right, let's take a look at video effects. We have uh, several types you can use. Uh, let's see, we can blur and sharpen. So you can see that we have these and we can actually animate them if you want to. So for example, if you wanted to make this, actually I'm gonna animate, let's see, three seconds. This is three seconds around here, perfect. So let me move this to the right. So what I'm gonna do is actually animate the blurriness. So here's my Gaussian blur. I'm gonna turn on the stopwatch by clicking on here. Then I'm gonna move over here and change this to basically a zero. So it's gonna look like, and then the animation's gonna continue if I have it correct, because theoretically it should be like this. All right, let's see what that looks like. One gingerbread. Okay, I'm already bored. So I'm gonna move this to the left. 
Let me crop these. And go like this. All right, gingerbread. Very nice. All right, I might add an extra text here and a short film by Academic Phoenix Plus. You can't read that. <laughs> Let's reduce that. Grab this, move it to over here. Let's, oh, now this is the tricky part, right? You notice that, oops, edit, redo. Um, make sure you've got the right one, right? So make sure this is the correct one. And then I'm gonna change this to probably a lighter color. Let's see what's a good color, red, blue. Blue might be nice. Let's pick something a little more easier to read. Definitely making this smaller. Ooh, I'm not a fan of the color. Let me make it brighter. Let's see, there's things I feel like I can make this one even smaller still. And there's so much you can do. I mean, I can literally spend all day doing this. I'm trying to make it fast. I'm not a big fan of how separated these words are, so I'm gonna actually bring this closer, something like that. Maybe bring this smaller still. I don't want it. I don't want it to be distracting. All right. So now I got to figure out what to do with this text. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab. Oh, actually, I'm going to do a directional blur, and I'm going to keyframe both of these, then move to the right, and we. So the animation is going to be. Whoa, that's a little crazy. All right, let me try that again. Let me go here and then just increase the length. There we go. And then I can place, play with the opacity. So it's clear here. Let's go to the opacity, keyframe that, move to the right and then zero it out. All right. There it is. Cool. And then of course you want to add music and things like that, sound effects. Um, I'm not, that's beyond the scopes of this. <laughs> There's plenty of free music out there. You can also uh, hire somebody that would be amazing to do your music and sound effects and things like that. But that is basically how you create an animated short. Let me render this out. Actually, I haven't saved. Don't forget to save. File save as or control S is the shortcut. And let's export this to medium. File, export media, and then we're gonna go and click on send to media encoder. This is gonna open up media encoder and H.264 is fine, high is fine. Let's go ahead and click on this. Gonna copy the path. Let's go to movies and then I'm gonna save it here. This is gonna be my ginger bread underscore animation. Hit play. You can see the cool animation happening right there. Super fun. All right, let's take a look. Go to movies. There it is. Bring it over here and hit play. Ta-da! Again, the quality can be significantly better, especially around here. <laughs> um, but you can see that everything is working. We basically created a whole animated short. We've got the introduction, we've got camera motion, we modeled everything, we textured everything, we uh, rigged, we animated it, we created depth of field. Um, the only issue is the quality, and I'm really sorry about that. Hopefully you guys can still get something out of this uh, tutorial. It's super fun. And uh, again, if you want to put this in your portfolio, make sure that you're under high quality. You don't want all this noise to be distracting. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did and you learned, or you, if you even learned a thing or two, please like and subscribe. And of course, leave a comment below and let me know what you think.
If there's somebody out there that's interested in creating an, a quick animated short, please share these videos. This would be amazing. I have a playlist that they can watch if they're interested in uh, learning from the beginning all the way to the end. If you want to support me further, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free resources, ebooks, 3D models, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time in another really fun video tutorial.